Legends, myth, and folklore have been around since the beginning of time. Tales of demons, lost souls, curses, psychopaths, and much more fill planet Earth's long past. Here in the United States of America, terrifying and unexplainable stories within small towns and communities have passed through the generations by word of mouth. Many of these tales go back hundreds of years and reflect a dark, sinister past. Horrifying encounters, unexplained disappearances, and strange apparitions have come and gone without answers. Answers we may never understand. From haunted cemeteries to vanishing hitchhikers, cursed land to murder sites. Come along with us carefully as we travel and venture into the Legends of the Locals. Spring Lake Park, a severely wearisome bit of land entrenched by an indecipherable wretched massacre of the past, is located in the city of Texarkana, Texas. The Texarkana Moonlight Murders, a series of four related and unsolved serial killer murders committed in areas closely within the town of Texarkana, occurred in 1946. The crooked perpetrator soon became known as the Phantom Killer, or the Phantom Slayer. This deranged suspect would eventually attack eight people, five of them fatally, over an intense ten-week period. The first three attacks occurred at lovers' lanes or quiet stretches of road in Texas nearby the infamous Spring Lake Park, which was and still is a hangout for Texarkana youth and others. The fourth attack occurred at an isolated farmhouse in Arkansas outside of the town. The murders caused a true state of panic in Texarkana throughout the summer. Residents armed themselves and, at dusk, locked themselves indoors while police patrolled streets and neighborhoods to no avail. The jaw-dropping events inspired many media works, including the 1976 film, The Town That Dreaded Sundown. As of 2024, the Phantom Killer has never been identified, with many believing that the killer's true genealogy still remains within the town of Texarkana itself. To this very day, many historians and paranormal investigators feel the events from long ago have cast a dark and disturbing paranormal aura over Spring Lake Park. According to local legend, Spring Lake Park and nearby North Park Road are said to be haunted by the lost souls of Paul Martin and his friend Betty Jo Booker, who were shot to death at this location. Betty Jo's body was discovered nearly two miles away, yet it is thought that she possibly was killed with Paul here at Spring Lake Park and taken away via vehicle. Two apparitions have commonly been professed to have been seen by many eyes here over the last 80 years since the murders, creating instant shock. Screams of enduringly agonizing pain have been heard coming from the park during late hours of the night, and EVP and magnetic field detectors have been known to record extremely high levels of activity during a full moon in Texarkana. Locals still get chills passing along North Park Road, many often reminiscing back to those dreadful days and nights long ago when the Phantom Killer terrorized this town.
Who among us is audaciously meddlesome enough to venture into the hideous domain of the Phantom Killer in Spring Lake Park? Robert Johnson's Crossroads, an eerily bone-chilling spot said to be visited personally by Lucifer himself, is found seven miles southeast outside of the town of Clarksdale, Mississippi. Robert Leroy Johnson, born on May 8th of 1911, was an American blues musician and songwriter whose past is as mysterious and unexplainable as any artist in the short history of America. His powerful haunting music, shadowy life, and head-scratching death have made him a mythical figure. As a traveling performer who played mostly on street corners, in juke joints, and at Saturday night dances, Johnson had little commercial success or public recognition in his lifetime. Other than his 29 song recordings, very little was known of Mr. Johnson's life. Johnson died on August 16th of 1938, at the age of 27, near Greenwood, Mississippi, of unknown causes. What makes Robert Johnson so puzzling is that he not always had superior skills on the guitar. As a young man living on a plantation in rural Mississippi, Johnson had a tremendous desire to become a great blues musician, although he was just average according to all who knew him. Johnson was instructed by an unknown old-time blues musician to take his own guitar to a crossroad just out of town just prior to midnight. He sat down on one knee and starts to play the guitar. He was told to wait and he would know when the time was right. At the stroke of midnight in the darkness of Mississippi, Johnson was shockingly met by a large black entity who appeared like an extremely tall and slender man who slowly approached. Robert Johnson then started to cry. The devil wipes his tears and uses them to polish the guitar strings. The devil breathes onto the guitar's interior. Then the devil plays. It's haunting. It's sinister. The apparition then returned the guitar to Johnson, giving him mastery of the instrument and the guitar pick in exchange for his soul. According to local lore, at this very location Robert Johnson decided to sell his soul to the devil himself to achieve musical success. Bizarre sounds and sights have been beheld at this crossroad, with many historians and paranormal experts contributing Robert Johnson's encounter at this very spot for the reason of the haunting occurrences. Locals passing by during late hours of the night have witnessed a large, dark apparition within the nearby radius of the location. Are you foolishly valiant enough to step foot on the cursed grounds of fear known as Robert Johnson's Crossroads? Avon Cemetery, a grisly gravesite said to be home to nightmarish atrocities, is found just north of the town of DeQueen, Arkansas. But this location is home to a tale of sinister motives from long ago, one that seems to have casted an enormously dark cloud over the likes of this land. Many years back, nearby sat an old church just across the dirt road from the cemetery. To the left of the cemetery is a junction where three roads meet. An old church with a well on the outside was located on the north side of the junction. Legend says that on one tragic day long ago that a woman who was drawing water from the well sat her baby on the edge. The baby soon fell in and drowned, sending the mother into obvious sheer panic and emotional distress. Townspeople say that the baby's body was soon recovered and buried nearby in Avon Cemetery. And not too long after that, the mother strangely passed away herself, being buried in the startling graveyard after dying from grief soon after. The previous building here was used as a community building by the 1970s, and no longer a church congregation. Yet oddly, all the older, elderly adults in town mysteriously would insist that no children were to go near the well on the property for no reason whatsoever. Curiously, the building was torn down and well covered up after a cult was found holding meetings there not long into the 70s. Since the incident at the well, 
Locals have told of uptight and frenzied moments of fear while at this location. According to local lore, Avon Cemetery is haunted by the forever lost souls of the deceased mother and her child. Unnerving baby cries have been heard radiating from the area where the well was once positioned. Although it is covered, witnesses have still testified to hearing the otherworldly shrieks to this very day. Other persistent reports include seeing the dark apparition of a woman running throughout the cemetery and quickly towards the vicinity of the well, looking for her baby with cunning ferociousness. She is said to make disturbing sounds also and has been heard whispering softly from behind visitors' ears. Would your heartbeat be unflinched at the dreadfully high-strung Avon Cemetery? Merchant's Pub and Plate, an interesting yet perplexing site known for its startling stories of scariness, is found in the downtown area of Lawrence, Kansas. Beginning in 1863 until 1930, this location operated as Merchant's National Bank in the upstairs office space. At this time, downstairs served as a saloon, a clothing store, barber shop, restaurant, and an auctioneer's office. In 1930, Merchants Bank merged with the First National Bank. The bank lasted here until 1972. After First National Bank closed, the building was used for various reasons. After sitting vacant for 10 years, it became Teller's Restaurant in 1993. In 2013, Teller's closed and reopened as the current Merchants Pub and Plates. In 1932, Clyde Barrow of Bonnie and Clyde stole $33,000 with his partner, Ralph Foltz, at this very site. The two were staying at the nearby Eldridge Hotel. It is said by locals and historians also that during its earliest years as a bank, a worker in the bank somehow met an untimely demise here in the building with many speculating that the staircase is where this startling and mysterious death happened many years ago. In the years since being a bank, staff in the building have told of strange hair-raising occurrences that have left many speechless, and also in question of what is still inside this building at 746 Massachusetts Street that seems to remain. According to local lore, the Merchant's Pub and Plate is haunted by an unexplainable force that is said to show definite signs of paranormal activity at the emasculatingly treacherous staircase. Staff and visiting diners over the last century have reported seeing an alarming vanishing apparition slowly ascending the steps, only to disappear within the next few seconds, to the ominous astonishment of all. Others have felt an eerie presence while descending the infamously shocking fleet of steps from long ago. Is anyone brazenly insane enough to ramble throughout the demoralizing celestial setting known as Merchant's Pub and Plate? The 1859 Jill Marshall's Home and Museum, a skin-crawling spectacle withheld by an otherworldly persistence, is located in the historic district of Independence, Missouri. Constructed in 1859 as a county jail for Jackson County, 
The front of the property was home for the county marshal, and the back side has 12 limestone jail cells. A brick structure was added onto the rear of the original jail in 1907 to house hard labor chain gangs. The notoriously inhospitable jail cells were not heated, and some prisoners died of exposure. Each cell is 6 by 9 feet and intended for 3 prisoners, though during the chaotic civil war, up to 20 prisoners were confined in each cell making for truly terrible conditions. During a jailbreak on June 13th of 1866, a sheriff by the name of Henry Bugler was killed in a gun battle as 5 or 6 unknown companions of a confederate guerrilla successfully broke the criminal out of the Jackson County Jail. This gorilla was William Quantrill, Henry Bugler's 11-year-old son, who was asleep upstairs nearby, was also shot during the ordeal and survived. Bugler, who was appointed sheriff of Jackson County just days earlier, died from a gunshot wound to the heart. The dungeon-like cells of the 1859 jail housed thousands of prisoners during the bloodiest periods of Jackson County's history. Times of darkness such as these, and many additional moments of violent deaths in the jail, some known and some unknown, are what locals and paranormal enthusiasts say make this location unique in its own way. According to local legend, this property at 217 North Main Street is said to be visited by aggravated spirits from the past, including murdered jailer Henry Bugler, who has been seen in the center south cell in a blue suit. The same exact blue suit that he wore when he took his last breath at this very location. The faint, deep voice of a reoccurring materialization has been heard for years commonly being picked up on EVP systems, though sometimes not heard by human ear. Not surprisingly, another former jailer, Marshal Jim Knowles, is said to have his soul lingering about the premises. During the Civil War, Mr. Knowles lost his life trying to settle the fight between two prisoners with opposing sentiments regarding the war. Many suggest that one of the first cells, as you enter the old jail, is thoroughly haunted above all and the exact reason for this is still unknown. Staff and visitors describe a feeling of nausea and chills and hearing the dauntingly persisting sound of footsteps. Witnesses over the last century have told of commonly hearing growling sounds coming from the cells and the disturbing sound of a man desperately gasping for air. Radios and other electronical devices seemingly turn on and off by themselves, and items of all shapes and sizes have mysteriously been moved around when nobody is present in the jail whatsoever. Are you heroic enough to occupy any space inside the unfavorably threatening 1859 Jail Marshal's home and museum? The Pea Ridge National Military Park, the incomprehensible home to a dark and unfathomable battle during the Civil War is found in the northwest part of the state near the town of Garfield, Arkansas. On the days of March 7th through the 8th of 1862, over 23,000 soldiers fought here to decide the fate of Missouri, which was a turning point of the turbulent American Civil War. This was the most pivotal battle west of the Mississippi River, which saw hundreds upon hundreds of dead bodies left on the ground after the smoke cleared. still standing and restored Elkhorn Tavern, which was the epicenter of much of the battle, was used as a field hospital during the fight and no doubt was witness to moments of pure hell. Since those dreadful two days in 1862, 
the renowned Pea Ridge Battlefield has remained the home of some spooky legends and tales over the years that have put it on the watch list of supernatural investigations. According to local legend, this location is known thoroughly to be inhabited by the long lost souls of soldiers from long ago who met their untimely demise on these hallowed grounds. Witnesses who have observed this battlefield during the middle of the night have reported that musket fire has oddly been heard, along with the burdensome apparitions of mangled and seemingly confused soldiers from the battle that occurred here. Some have also reported feelings of being followed by something unseen, even hearing indistinguishable growls like that of an animal when nothing or nobody is around. One particular group of paranormal enthusiasts once acquired an audio recording of marching drums and field commands while studying the area and its spine-chilling surroundings. Not surprisingly, many say that the Elkhorn Tavern here is a source of severe phantom activity. Blood-stained basement walls and strange sounds are just one of the many intriguing oddities that have overtaken the Elkhorn Tavern. Faces of unknown origin appear in the windows of the historical building also. Are you thoughtlessly heedless enough to remain enclosed within the discomforting and torturous battlefield known as Pea Ridge? Dead Children's Playground, an unsettling location known to unstring moments upon moments of terror, is located on the westernmost side of the Maple Hill Cemetery in Huntsville, Alabama. Founded around 1822, this particular cemetery is the oldest and largest cemetery in Huntsville and has been home to over 80,000 burials. During the 1960s, a terrible string of child abductions terrorized the city of Huntsville. With oddly no ransom requests for any of the children, many locals and officials thoroughly believed the abductor at hand was not just abducting, but sadly also killing these children. Merely weeks later, these beliefs were proven to be correct when the skull of a child was found in the nearby quarries just outside of Maple Hill Cemetery. Further into the investigation, more skeletal remains were found along with corpses of other recently missing children closely nearby, around the vicinity of the current area of the dead children's playground. After the last bodies were found, the town's child abduction suddenly came to a halt, but the true identity of the Huntsville child killer was never confirmed, as it has stayed to this very day. In 1985, 25 years after those unspeakably terrible events, the quarries and surrounding land were turned into Maple Hill Park. The park is known to the locals as Dead Children's Playground. Since the 1960s, nothing but paranormal filled moments have come out of this exact location. According to local legend, the metaphysical ghosts of children who have passed away play upon the playground and swing upon the swing sets during all hours of the day and night. 
shocking reappearing spirits have had eyes laid upon themselves and have also amazingly been captured on film by numerous paranormal investigations. Shiny floating orbs of various glowing colors and sizes have been reported floating about near the playground, as well as around the entire Maple Hill Cemetery. The swings miraculously can be seen swinging by themselves back and forth, and the sounds of laughter and children's voices can be heard. Between midnight and 3 a.m., the paranormal activity is at its highest levels. Some locals and historians also have another theory regarding the reason for these children from long ago still inhabiting the cemetery and playground. According to documents, many children who died in Huntsville during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic are buried in Maple Hill plots adjoining the playground. The spirits of those hundreds of deceased children, some say, come out after dark to run and play as they might have in life. Odd apparitions have commonly been known to appear in photographs taken at the playground, not previously seen by the naked eye until the photos are later developed. Do you think you are fearlessly certified enough to endure the ghostly proximities of the daunting dead children's playground? Primrose Lane, a freakishly abnormal neighborhood dead end road that leads to unsettling encounters, is located in the northwest outskirts of town in Paragould, Arkansas. This area has been known for many years to beat with a resounding pulse of paranormal energy, and many locals say one grisly night long ago has resulted in this street producing ghoulish moments galore. According to local legend, the ghost of a man whom took his own life via shotgun and his phantom dog had been said for many years to haunt the unspeakably eerie Primrose Lane. Older locals of the area recalled that the man and his feline companion would walk the nearby streets and also venture out into the nearby woods often. After taking his own life, the man's dog remained by his side and refused to eat until the dog's life too was lost. Many say because of a broken heart as a result of his best friend leaving this earth. Several locals tried taking in the dog, but it was to no avail. Since that demoralizing night long ago, the ghosts of the man and his dog have been amazingly witnessed by the generations since, startling even the bravest of minds. Their disappearing apparitions have also been seen slowly walking into the woods, and rumors of startled recipients of scary encounters in these same woods have prospered also. The strong sense of being watched while at this location has been enough to make a mind mentally unhinged forever. Are you undeterred enough to take the frenzied unfortunate drive down the always terrifying Primrose Lane?
The Sheridan Courthouse Square, a startling margin of area said to be the foundation of evil perimeters, is located in the center of town of Sheridan, Arkansas. The first courthouse at this very spot was built in 1870. The building then burned on March 13th of 1877. The second courthouse was built in 1880, while the third courthouse was constructed in 1910. The fourth was erected not long after. The fifth and current building was built around 1964. Throughout the history of this town, they have without a doubt had good moments and yet they have had unbelievably dark times also. Long before the Civil War and long after, public hangings and mob lynchings were a part of American pioneer history. Many historians say some of these deaths were in good merit, while others were done wrongly and without justification. According to local legend, the courthouse and the surrounding town square are said to be haunted by the many souls from long ago whom took their last breaths in the most unpleasant of ways imaginable. There are consistent reports of the faces of apparitions in the courthouse windows, making even the most bravest of hearts shudder in the most consistent overwhelming fear. The specters of soldiers in Civil War attire have been identified wandering the roads and alleys in the surrounding areas. Screams have been heard during the late hours of the night, confusing and bewildering humans passing by. Inside the courthouse itself, Disembodied footsteps are constantly known to be echoing throughout the halls. The historical past of the town of Sheridan, Arkansas has seemed to provoke a frightening supernatural feel towards the present day. Are you indeed thoughtless enough to drift around the ghoulish atmosphere of the unsettling Sheridan Courthouse Square? The story in, a horrifically quaint destination said to be a discomforting supernatural playground, is found in the small town of Story, Indiana. In its heydays, origin years between 1880 and 1929, Story would become the largest settlement in this secluded area, as the village supported two general stores, a non-denominational church, a one-room schoolhouse, a grain mill, sawmill, slaughterhouse, blacksmith's forge, and a post office. Story never recovered from the Great Depression, as families abandoned farms in search of work elsewhere. The infamous General Store, now known as the Story Inn, continued to operate through the 1970s. In 1978, Benjamin Schultz and his wife, Cynthia, purchased four and a half acres that included the grocery store, grist mill, barn, and a small rented house. They initially occupied the second floor of the general store building as their residence. Benjamin and Cynthia soon jointly pursued their vision of creating a bed and breakfast. In this manner, the story end was born. In the decades that followed, the couple reassembled the nearly 24 acres that today defines the old town, 
converting the upstairs of the grocery store and the surrounding cottages into guest homes and making the name Story Inn synonymous with the town itself. Since operating full time as a motel, restaurant, and general store, the creaky wooden floors of this location and many other attributes of antiquity have contributed to hair raising tales of supernatural phenomena. According to local legend, this property is respectfully haunted by a lingering female ghost who appears often in a specific room, oddly when a particular blue table lamp is turned on. For this ominous reason the ghost has been dubbed the Blue Lady throughout the years as they creepily pass. There are numerous tales of the Blue Lady Ghost, and a former owner has published some of the older accounts from stories beginnings that he found written down in forgotten documented guest books stored in the attic. Not surprisingly, there are rumored to be over 100 different examples and instances of visiting humans interacting with the Blue Lady over the last century. Some various accounts claim that the Blue Lady is a bit on the sexual side. Some have felt a sinister feeling while she appears. Others have felt at ease for unknown reasons. She often appears following smells of peaches and mostly appears as a full-body apparition who will groom herself at the dressing table. She disappears immediately as someone attempts to communicate. Are you bold and overconfident enough to stand firmly within the unearthly realm of the story in?